welcome, welcome. This is Mark Williams of Team Footprints. We're here filming the Mecca, New York City's Movers and Shakers. I have so <coughs> happened to be so fortunate enough to have one of the big time movers and shakers here in the culture here in New York City. Um, his name is David Cha-Ching Teal. Uh, give us a little bit of background of who you are and welcome to our show here at the podcast. Um, my name is um, David. Um, they call, everybody call me Cha-Ching. You know, I'm a um, host, entertainer in New York City basketball. There you go. Um, but a little more than that. Um, so when I say that, I mean, um, you, you look at Instagram and all the, um, the social media platforms, and without a doubt, you are a mover and shaker because you're, we're here at Dykeman Park, and Dykeman has become one of the premier basketball tournaments in not only New York City, but the country. And you're spearheading that, spearheading that. Tell me how that progression been for Dykeman to become what it is currently. I mean, before, before I um, attended Dykeman, it was already pushing in that direction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just, just came out, just did the best that I could do to, you know, push the culture forward, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? As far as with the high school, because um, my limit had always been there. Uh -huh. So I was able to push the high school in that direction where it's known around, like, the country. Right. As one of the best. Without a doubt, I think that you and, um, and Mr. Stevens also um, the commissioner. Uh, yes. um, you guys are doing a great job social media wise. Um, in your time here, have you seen the culture within New York City basketball? Have you seen it grow as far as our impact on the rest of the world? Yeah, especially in the um, high school division because that wasn't the main focus. Mm -hmm. So we was able to put some stuff together to make that like the main focus where kids want to come in and stuff like that so i would say like over the last couple of years the high school grown to where it's like marquee like right nightcap stuff right i remember when i was playing back way back way back way back um strick was up here going bust the dead um and, and, and i know uh, strick was probably one of the culture movers here in new york city at that time yes. yeah and that's when the, the focus again was on pro am yeah, pro -Am. the pro am um now it's like you said it's more high school although more it's still pro-am pop no no pro-am pro -am still still, still number one number one around the world but that high school is like probably neck to neck with it right now. i agree with that um who in your time has been a culture mover within the high school community basketball wise um isaiah briscoe um and now isaiah washington so right. those two over the last eight years been like the culture shift players right. to build it in New York City. Right. I, I would agree with that. And, and when you say Isaiah, you I mean as far as what's Isaiah twice, right? Yeah, it's two Isaiah, <laughs> yeah, 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 Isaiah, Isaiah. It's fortunate to have it like that. But yeah, Isaiah Briscoe was from from Jersey and I was able to, you know, with connections through cash and um, uh -huh. get him to come to the city and he was able to outperform in like all the New York City tournaments. Right. You know, he went on to Kentucky and the resume and Orlando Magic. So, right. you know, but just to see him grow here, I watched him grow, actually build my brand, uh -huh. basically alongside of him. So I would say him and Isaiah Washington. Now, yeah. Isaiah Washington would be of the Jelly Fan world. Yes. Right. Uh, the, that's like the, the the next culture shift. Right. So, you know, the, them two been a big, real big impact to New York City basketball, basically around the country. Right. And that's made New York City, again, the hub as far as the culture is concerned on the high school level. Yes. For basketball. I, uh, recently, you guys partnered, well, not necessarily you, but you were um, involved in um, a Slam magazine. Um, they came down and they had some certain high school players, superstars, come in. Yes. Um, tell me how was that experience? You dealt with players coming from all over uh, the world for the most part. For, like, for me, you know, I follow them kids just like they follow me. To know that some of them kids was actually following me, that would make it more dope. But I just like to know more about the kid right. more than just like his first and last name so i do my little research i dig in a little deep uh -huh. and um and they came out they i mean the rain held up so they was able to perform but i think they would have performed a little bit more better if it would have been just been like extremely hot that day but them like kids, now yeah like now <laughs> so like them kids coming in was a big plus for new york city basketball and and my brand because right. i was able to feed off of them right that would made it extra now, when you say um, your brand, what makes you different than most um, entertainers and, and, and announcers in New York City? Because I don't do it for the paycheck. I just do it for what I love to do. Uh -huh. You know, just it's just like my vibe. You uh -huh. know, it ain't about no money. It ain't about 
not like some of the venues I growing up, I'm doing it just off love, relationship. So that's what made me do it and stick with it. So I just feel I'm different because I just bring a whole bunch of different pieces to the game. I could costumes, I do characters, I do I'm just anything to spark the crowd and right. keep the crowd involved, intrigued. That's all I do to just, and there's no, it's nothing rehearsed, it's just freelance. How I'm freelance how I'm feeling today. I appreciate that, that's actually pretty dope. So let me ask you this question. When you're out here playing, or doing your job, and you're motivating the young uh, young men, and also you do um, some women come by here also, yes. right? When you're motivating them, they get amped up to be here in Dykeman with you, or whatever park you're at. Yeah. What park do you go to, or tournament that you go to that gets you like, uh, like, uh? What, um, well, currently I'm just at Dykeman right now. I want the, I want the decrease, the moving around. Right. But I, I toured some of the, the um, tournaments, different tournaments in the city, Watson, Tri-State. You know, I work with some of them, the commissioners over there. So it's like family, but Dykeman is like, this is it. It's, it. it's like home as for as now. So, you know, I just, I'm just happy to be part of Dykeman, what they doing. Right. And just to put my brand alongside what they've been doing for 29 years this is great for me. But if you were to do the guard, you turn it out, 19,000? I turned the guard in now if it had 200 people <laughs> in there, like the Met Stadium. But uh, yeah, word. word. Um, nah, nah, nah. Just it ain't about it ain't about the venue. It ain't about the crowd. It's about just going out. Just gotta perform. Right. Whether it's 10,000, 200, 50. So I've been in some. We used to do like high school here on Sunday nights. Uh huh. 50 people, uh -huh. but the 50 don't move. Uh -huh. So, you know, it grown, it got bigger, and then we start heading into the week with the, with the pros. So that's what made it real elite, and we raised the ball that way. So that's what made it more dope. Now, being that you've toured around a little bit, would you say that New York City as a whole, culture-wise, is still the mecca as far as basketball is concerned? Yes, now. I mean, over the probably about the last 10 years, uh -huh. but the last five for sure, we definitely back. Uh -huh. I know the pre previous five was like up and down because it's more of the traveling world right. and the big all Americans, but now we starting to get those type of studs here. Most right. of the studs live here now. Right, right. So that's what make the culture better. And then with some of the kids coming along and just pushing it further, made it, that's what made it like we, like we here. We, we where do you see your brand moving on to? Next level for you guys. Um, my brand. Uh, I really don't. I really don't like to set like a mark on what it. Just I just go with the flow. But mm -hmm. I do want to do some arena stuff. Um, you know, I just wait. My number get called. I just. I just don't push for it. If I don't get it, I just stay in the lab and work on what I need to work on. Mm -hmm. But I. I'm just like, you no. Know, I go with the punches. You know, right. I, I do want to do some TV stuff. Right. Probably within a year or two, but you know that'll come. It probably come six months. You right. don't know. So you know, I'm just, I just go with a flow. Just a flow. You know, it's a rhythm. I ain't rushing nothing. Right. I just, you know, I'll flow. Now, a couple more questions before we get them out of here. What makes Dykeman Dykeman? Because you have the train up here. You have the buildings here. You have people out here out here shooting. So what, what makes what makes Dykeman? the premier location? Um, well, Dykeman has already got its built-in fan base. Uh -huh. So they got the the lawyers that come out here day in and day night. Even if it's raining or we got a little sun shower, those, they just built in. So uh -huh. you already built in with like maybe 500. Uh -huh. And this is on top of the talent that come and the people that follow them, uh -huh. you know, just make it just like epic every night. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to see it progress to where it is now. Like I said, I'm old, old, old. So I seen it go from when Strick and, and that whole generation, um, Dominican Power, and yeah, they was yeah. rocking, rocking, and to where they where it is now, and it's it's it's, it's changed. It's um, changed. Yeah. It's changed, and, and I think that you are a reason for that. Um, and obviously, Mr. Stevens is involved also. Um, and I think New York City as a whole appreciates you and what you're doing. And I, you know, have you know, somebody that's trying to highlight the culture as itself in New York City. Uh, I appreciate that also. No problem. I like it. It was just a quick text out, like, I'm humble, like, they don't understand, like, off the clock is like, I'm chill, but when I get across some lines, it's like, I just gotta Old do time. my job. Even even with my friends, I come in with some of the players, uh -huh. you can hang all day, but they know, like, when I get on that on that court, you gotta perform. It's right. like, you have to perform. 
If not, I'll let, I'm going to have to tell you that you're not <laughs> performing today. It ain't your day. Right. Every day ain't your day, but it's good to see that some kids get that day. Right. So it, it might be another kid day that day. So that's what made it, that make the journey for me better. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. No problem. Chief, we're the back, but we out. Cha-ching.